Good morning. Hope you're having a good Sunday morning. It is March, what, 29th, something like that, <laughs> this morning. Let's begin here in just, just a minute. So wait for people to get on, but we'll just, we'll begin here just in, just in a minute. Okay, I'm back. Thanks for joining us this morning for our live stream. I'm glad you are tuning in. Let's begin with some announcements. Let's see if this works. You may see a, a, a slide up on the live stream. Uh, so first announcement is that the weekly service is posted to our website. So if you Google First Presbyterian Church Paulding, then you will see our website and you can click on church services and you can listen to not only this week's service, but any week you would like, you can listen to our services. Also, uh, remember Right Now Media and uh, your ability to uh, tune into that. Even if you're not a member of our church, they're offering free access during this time. So take advantage of that. If you are following along with our Ray Vanderland series, we are on session five this week, session five with Walking with God in the Desert. And for our Sunday school class, this week is lesson 10 for the Judges series with J.D. Greer. So feel free to take advantage of that this week. Also, the Ministerial Association, which we are a part, uh, gave a donation to Becky Michaels and NOCAC to help out those during this tough time. So know that as a church and as a ministerial association, we are uh, trying to help this community. We are donating money. We are looking to be involved. Also, know that there is an opportunity if you would like to give if you feel so led by god to give to our our church during this time i know with not having services we're not able to take an offering and we still uh, would like to uh, keep functioning as a church and so uh, there's an online giving option that i will link below it's an easy way to give if you want to give uh, electronically in that way. Also, if you would just like to stop by and uh, drop off your donation, there's it's just me in the building, so you can safely just come in and drop it off if you would like. So that's our announcements today. Let's begin this time together with a call of worship. Our call of worship today begins with Psalm 118. Psalm 118 says this, The Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. The Lord is on my side as my helper. You are my God. I will give you thanks. You are my God. I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Our first song together uh, is song... Uh, the song, You Alone Can Rescue. I think it was new to a lot of us last week, so we're going to sing that again. Keep practicing uh, this song together. I think it's a very appropriate song for this time, that God alone can rescue. So wherever we are, let's continue to uh, sing to him and uh, sing to him that you alone can save, you alone lift us from the grave. 
So let's sing. Let's have a prayer together. Uh, we're going to end the prayer with the Lord's Prayer. So, uh, so know that we say debts and debtors. Let's pray. God, our Father, we praise you this morning. Thank you for your grace in our lives. We pray that you would be with all of those essential workers, those healthcare workers, those grocery store workers, all those that are having to work during this tough time. We pray that you would keep them healthy, that you would keep their families healthy, you would keep them safe. For all of those that are isolated at home, we pray that you would give them comfort. For all of us that uh, have worries and anxieties, you pray. we pray that you would give us peace. We pray that this would be a time of renewal, 
a time that we would renew our commitment to you, that we would recognize you as our provider. We pray for our nation, that our nation would turn to you. We pray that, that those who are waiting for the storm to pass, that you would that you would be with them, that you would draw them to you. And now we confess our sin to you, our God. God, we thank you for your grace in our life. And now we pray as Jesus, our Lord and Savior, taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture reading today comes from Psalm 25 and from John 14. Psalm 25 says this, starting in verse 4. It says, Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth, and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast and they are love for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Uh, John 14, J Jesus says this, verse 3, I will come back and take you with me uh, to be with me that you may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, for how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you will know him and have seen him. Amen. If you have been following along, in our series, Walking with God in the Desert, then you would know uh, kind of the direction that we've been heading all this time. Uh, Ray Vanderland has put out a video series and uh, each week we are encouraged to watch that week's video. It's available in Right Now Media, but we also have this little devotional time where we talk about uh, a little bit of what he talks about, but I also want to encourage you, give you a little bit of introduction, a little bit of a study here now on Sunday morning. So far in this series, we've seen that difficult times draw us near to God. Ray Vanderlyn calls these times desert times. These desert times teach us to trust him in a deeper way, in a new way. God, we learned, previously, in previous weeks, that God is the shade at our right hand, that he is near us and he is able to give us relief in tough times. He does not promise to turn our deserts into five-star restaurants, but he will provide us with what we need. Not only is God like a shade tree in the scorching desert, but God's people are called to be shade trees as well. So, we looked at the different trees in the desert and the ways that these trees uh, are used in the Bible to illustrate us uh, how we are to be, how, how God's kingdom is, to teach us how we are to act. And so we've been looking at these different trees. We looked at the acacia tree and how we are to be the acacia tree planted by streams of water, delighting in God's word. We are to be tamarisk trees. We're to be planting tamarisk trees, making the world a better place for those who come after us. Last week, we looked at the desert wadis and saw that we are to build our house up on the rock, out of these dry riverbeds, but up on the rock of Jesus Christ in his teachings. And whenever the flood waters come, that if we have built our house up on the rock, that then our house, our life will not be shaken. 
we've been looking, I think, a lot about who we are as God's people. And now this week, we're going to talk about the path or the, the life that God leads us on. This week, our lesson is about those desert paths that God leads us on. So that's what we're going to look at this morning. Now, I want to start with a question. Get your brains working a little bit and think, what was the craziest hiking experience that you've ever been on? I'll give you a moment to think. Now, I think the craziest hiking experience that I've ever heard about was the hiking experience that my brother and his wife went on just a few years ago. Many of you know that I have a twin brother. His name is Carrie, and he's married. His wife's name's Brandy. And they decided to go hiking at Arches National Park in Moab, Utah. It was a scorching hot summer day. Carrie and Brandy, they grabbed their water bottles and they headed down a trail into a trail system named Devil's Garden. Now, if that name isn't ominous enough, it was a popular trail and they shared the trail with a few other hikers and it was smooth. It was, uh, it was actually a little bit too crowded, they determined. Too many other hikers. They couldn't enjoy the sights together. And so they decided to take an alternate path. Now, this alternate path is what the park refers to as a primitive path. Looking at this path on the Arches website, after I heard this story, this is how the Arches website describes this path that they took. It says, quote, it's the most difficult path in the Devil's Garden Trail system. The obstacles in this segment include difficult route finding, steep slopes, narrow drop-offs, and rock scrambling. <laughs> now, that sounds like a difficult path, doesn't it? I mean, all this, though, was lost to them because they didn't look up this path uh, previously, and it would have been lost, all of this would have been lost on a beginner hiker and an un unknowing hiker because the beginning of this path, the beginning of this primitive trail actually is very clearly marked. It is easy. It looks like it's going to be no problem. And so Carrie and Brandy went down this primitive path. Well, the first 10 minutes were wonderful. The, there were less people. It was beautiful. They had plenty of water. But this quickly changed. It began to become very difficult to tell where the path was. The once clear path was barely recognizable to the natural terrain. The path began to follow a dry creek bed and they started just guessing where the trail was. At some point, panic struck. They felt lost. They had run out of water. They were dehydrated. Even their hands began to swell. The high rock formations that were around them made it impossible to tell where they were. Lost in the most difficult trail system of the desert in that area with steep slopes, narrow drop-offs, rock scrambling, yet this was a desert path. You may not have ever experienced a similar hike, but I wonder how many of you have ever felt like this confused on the path of life, struggling up steep slopes to try to get a glimpse of where you are to get your bearings, walking along narrow drop-offs, fearful of what life may bring. And yet, this is the path that you thought God was leading you on. God's path has suddenly turned into a primitive path in Devil's Garden. For 40 years, God's people wandered the desert paths. In passages like Numbers 32, 13, it tells us that the Lord made Israel wander in the, uh, the wilderness for 40 years until the whole generation who had done evil in his sight was gone. You see, they had not trusted God to enter the promised land. And so Israel, God's people, wandered the desert. But this wandering doesn't mean that Israel was lost or that God wasn't with them. You see, the desert, the word desert or wilderness in Hebrew is midbar. 
It's a place that's uncultivated, a place of pastures and flocks. It is where a shepherd would lead his sheep to graze. Yes, it was rugged, and yes, it was hot, and I'm sure the sheep would get disoriented, but the shepherd would lead his sheep there for their good. The Israel Institute of Biblical Studies describes Midbar, or the wilderness or desert, in this way. It says that it's an unsettled area with sufficient amount of vegetation to support a flock of sheep. You see, in Israel's desert wanderings, God was like a shepherd leading his people, like a shepherd and a sheep leading his people on his path, teaching him his ways. God had not forsaken them. He was leading them and caring for them as a shepherd would with a sheep. Let me share a couple Bible passages that illustrate this point. For example, in Psalm 78, it says this, verse 52, but he brought his people out like a flock, talking about God. He led them like sheep through the wilderness. He guided them safely so they were unafraid. As we have looked at before, life with God is a walk where God teaches us to walk his paths. And so let's look at two more passages that illustrate the same point. Jeremiah 6, 16. It says, this is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it. You will find rest for your souls. Again, the Lord saying, walk in my ways. Walk on my path. I want to teach you. You are my people. Psalm 25, 4 through, uh, 4 through 5, it says this. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are my God and my Savior. And my hope is in you all day long. Now, some people think that God's paths should be easy. As if the paths that God leads us on are like the roads here in Paulding County. They're flat, they're smooth, they're wide. But God's paths in the desert are not like this. They're more like, sometimes they're more like the primitive paths that my brother took at Arches National Park. God sometimes leads us on these desert paths, primitive, difficult to discern at times, with steep slopes, narrow drop-offs, and rocks that we stub our toe on, or boulders that we have to scramble up. On the path of life, as Ray Vanderlyn says, he says this, there are stumbling stones, things in life that can trip us up, small stones that can be annoyances, large stones that can cause us pain, larger stones that can just stop us in our tracks. But in all of this, God promises that he will be with his people. It's still God's path, but sometimes he le leads us on these desert paths that look like these primitive paths that my brother was on. Now, Ray ends with this interesting illustration that I've never heard before. And I want to share that with you. In Psalm 81, verse 13 and 16, God says this. He says that if my people would listen to me, if Israel would only follow my ways, then you would be fed with the finest wheat and with honey from the rock, I will satisfy you. Now, isn't that an interesting phrase? With the honey from the rock. Honey is often a metaphor in the Bible, a metaphor for the goodness of God. Think of Psalm 19. That's where my mind immediately goes, where it says that God's word is described as sweeter than honey. It's sweeter than honey from the honeycomb. That's God and his word, God and his goodness. Honey is God's presence and his goodness that God wants to give us to satisfy us with. And honey, in this passage, is coming from the rock. Ray explains that this is a blessing of God's presence in unexpected places. None of us would expect honey from a rock, and yet there it is. God's presence in an unexpected place, along those desert paths. God's path is not clear of rocks. Those annoyances, those troubles, those tragedies but God's presence can be found in those rocks. 
In Ray's life, he learned to find honey in God's presence in the rock of an illness that he had. He had a heart surgery. But there, in that time, in that difficult time, God's presence was there. Honey in a rock. And I've experienced a similar thing on desert paths in my life. God's path can be rough. It can be rocky. But he is there. As followers of Jesus, we know that Jesus is the path to God. As I said earlier in John 14, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. And from now on, you will know him and have seen him. That's what Jesus says. The path of Jesus is not easy. It is the way of rest, though. It's the way of life though. And along that path, the paths of life, we can experience still the honey of God's presence, even in the most unexpected places. Now, I know what some of you have been probably thinking this whole time. What happened to your brother? <laughs> and he's okay. He made it off the path. There wasn't any serious injuries. Uh, you know, him and his wife, they're okay. It was a little bit scary for some time, and it was probably experience that they'll never forget, but they, uh, they made it home safe. But that will not be the last desert path that they will walk. They have journeyed on desert paths since then, and they will again, because God does not promise us an easy path. But along the path of God, they have found honey in unexpected places. They have a new baby boy named Brody, and he's a wonderful blessing to them. They know that God doesn't promise them an easy life, but Jesus is with them, leading like a shepherd in the wilderness. Amen. Let's end our time together by singing a song. This song is My Living Hope, and uh, Wherever you are, I know we're separated by distance, but I, I, I know that we are united in the spirit. We are united in our worship. So let's worship together, living hope. How great the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain i could not climb in desperation i turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ, my living hope Who could imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me. Savior, I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free, hallelujah, death has
the promise Your buried body began to breathe Out of the silence The roaring lion Declared the grave has no claim on me Then came the morning That sealed the promise Your buried body Began to breathe Out of the silence The roaring lion Declared the grave has no Amen. So wherever you are, I pray that you would have the peace of God, that you would be able to experience. Thanks for joining us for our live stream. And God bless.